Hi everyone. I am popping on a little bit early today. Only by a minute though. Um, so that we can get started because I have two fun fold card ideas for you and they're going to take more than a half hour. <laughs> so we're going to get started. So how is everyone today? I hope you're doing well. We're going to use we're going to use one retiring set, tea together, and the other card is going to use high tide, which is sticking around. So, but welcome if you're joining me live or if you're watching the replay. I am Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper, and I'm the owner and creator behind it, and I blog at thejoyfulstamper.com. I'm also an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and thank you so much for joining me today. So this is card number one I have. That's the Father's Day card. And this, hi Mary, this is the Mother's Day card I have today. And they both feature a fun fold. So we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to tell you that this card was inspired by one I got in the mail. Hi Jane. It was inspired by one I got in the mail um, from somebody who watches my live. Her name's, her name's Marilyn. And I just thought it was so cute. It has a front flap that opens up and then it's still a regular card so you can write on the inside too. And I thought this would be so cute for Mother's Day. So I decided to go ahead and adapt it. And I wanted to use the tea time stamp set because it is retiring and it's one I've really, really enjoyed. So let me get my supplies ready and let's get started making it. I'm gonna put all the dimensions on, um, I have a project sheet I made actually, and it's going to list all the measurements, all the supplies used to make this card. So you don't have to worry about writing anything down right now. So I'm starting with a piece of petal paint cardstock. It measures eight and a half inches by five and a half inches, and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter. And I'm just going to use my bone folder to crease that up. Then I used some of the beautiful Parisian Blossoms designer series paper. I am so sad that this paper is retiring in another month because I just, I love the soft colors of it and it's just, it's, it's pretty patterns. I'm actually, before I glue this down though, I'm going to go ahead and sponge soft suede ink with a Stampin' Sponge on the edges of my Petal Pink cardstock. Now the Stampin' Sponges come in a big circle. I cut mine down into four, sometimes even eight pieces, so I can get more use out of them. And then I like to put a binder clip on them. It keeps my fingers from getting super inky, because you can see I, I use these a lot. Sponging cardstock is one of my very, very favorite things to do. And I use a lot of soft suede ink when I'm doing this too. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Kim. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for joining me, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. I like the company. I have three daughters to talk to, but they're teenagers, so we're not always on the same wavelength, you know? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue to attach this. Look, that's the back side of this Parisian Blossoms Designer Series paper, and I actually haven't used this side yet. But I've been using an awful lot of this side. I just think it's so pretty. And sometimes I debate about putting the petal pink and the pool party colors together because I think, oh my goodness, is it going to look too much like a baby card? But um, I don't know. I like it, so I'm going to go with it anyways, you know? Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have glued that down yet. We'll pull that back up. We're going to take this piece of... So forget I did that part, okay? I sponged it. We're not gluing it yet. So I took another piece of Parisian Blossoms designer series paper and it's six inches by two inches. And I'm going to get out a scoreboard and I'm gonna score it at one inch on the long side. So if you have paper that needs to go in a certain direction, you're gonna to have to pay attention to that. So for instance, this one has writing on it and I need it to be able to face the right side up. So I have to be careful which end I'm scoring it. I'm going to put the score at the top. So, put it in my score thing and I'm going to use my bone folder to score it at the one inch mark. 
and I'm done with that part. And now I'm going to fold it right on that score line. Okay. Then I'm going to take a piece of pool party cardstock, and this measures five inches by two inches. So it's actually almost the same as that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and sponge that one also with soft suede ink. Can you tell I love the vintage distressed look on this card? Okay, you've got that. And then this punch is one I don't use very much, but it's the scalloped tag topper punch. And I don't know why I don't use it more because it's so pretty. But I'm gonna punch both, just one end of both of these pieces of paper. So slide it in there and just give it a punch and when it comes out, it makes it into a tag. And for this piece, I'm gonna punch the end that is not scored. So this is the part that I scored. I'm gonna punch essentially the bottom. I'll slide that right in there and give it a punch. There we go. Get those pieces away. Okay, and now we are going to do um, some, I think we can do some stamping. So we're going to stamp on this. So how this card opens is it's going like this. So I'm going to stamp that sentiment on there and then these two roses that come from the Tea Together stamp set. So let me get those images. I've had so much fun with this set the past couple years. Um, I think it was, was it a celebration freebie? I think a few years ago. And I think the dies were too, that go with it. Okay, so I'll put that greeting on there, making sure it's straight. And let me get a little stamp block for this tiny rose. Okay, and we're gonna use soft suede to stamp the greeting. Let me ink that up. I like this sentiment, it's perfect. I'm gonna give this to my mother, so if she's watching, she already knows. <laughs> and then I'm gonna use Petal Pink to stamp these two roses. And I'm gonna go one way at the top, and I'm gonna go the opposite way on the bottom. Okay. Now, to get our fun fold, I'm going to put some glue right here on the inside of this scored flap. And I'm going to put it behind my designer series paper here so it folds over just like that in the middle. And it'll open like that. Now I can go ahead and attach this to my card base. Okay, and this piece is going to get tucked right underneath, just like that. And you can see that it hides it perfectly because they're both the exact same shape. You use the same punch on those, so they'll line up very, they'll line up evenly. I seem to be having trouble with words today. Maybe I haven't talked to enough people lately. My husband's not a big talker, so oftentimes it's the dog that I have conversations with, especially since my daughters have school. Oh, yeah, we did, Jane. We did make a card with it. You're right. <laughs> you have a good memory, because I think that was a while ago. Now we are going to pretty up the front of this card with all kinds of good stuff. So where should we start? I think we'll start with, I took a scrap piece of Parisian design, Parisian Blossoms designer series paper, and I've used this pattern a lot to cut these flowers out and add them to different cards. But I'm gonna use this side now, and I am going to use a giant teapot. And so I need a pretty large block for that. And I'm going to ink it up with soft suede ink and I'm going to stamp it on here 
make sure I have the pattern going the right way or the way I want it. There's really no right or wrong way to this, okay? And I have a die to cut that out, but I'm gonna do all my stamping first so that I can just run everything through my die cut machine at once. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm gonna take the large flower from Tea Together and I'm going to stamp that in Versamark ink. Hi Jeanette, how are you guys doing? Did you get your van replaced or fixed? Okay, stamping that. Now I use a lot of scrap paper. I don't cut my stuff all nice and neat and even. I just pull from my stash what I've got. And now I'm gonna sprinkle some gold embossing powder on it. So you guys, did you see that Stampin' Up! is retiring the black embossing powder and the embossing buddy? I don't understand that. Black embossing powder? is the color that I use the most frequently. So that one, that one kind of puzzled me. All right, heat tool's going on. Hi, Cindy. All right, I'm letting the heat tool get hot. And I'm gonna use it to melt this gold powder. This rose looks so pretty embossed in gold. Okay, and I am going to use a flirty flamingo marker and a mint macaron marker to color those in. Now these are not Stampin' Blends. These are not our alcohol ink markers. These are our water-based dye markers. I didn't want to use my blends on this image just because I wasn't real interested in getting shading and hues and different colors. I just wanted to color. And I'm using the brush tip of this marker to fill it in. I find that when I heat emboss an image before coloring it, whether I'm using blender pens or markers or even water coloring, it makes it easier to color. I think it's because the embossing, the, the embossed lines of the image are a little bit raised so that it sort of contains the color and makes it easier to stay within the lines. Okay, so again, this is a flirty flamingo marker. And I just colored that rose with that. Now this, I'm using the brush tip of Mint Macarin. And I'm going to color the leaves with this. Mint Macarin is one of my favorite favorite Stampin' Up! colors. I used to, um, whenever Stampin' Up! had Sage Shadow, that was my favorite. And Sage Shadow is, is pretty close to Mint Macaron. Macaron. I don't know. I'm not French. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. <laughs> All I know is it's pretty. Those two are going to get die cut out. And now we are going to stamp our sentiment. Happy Mother's Day. And again, all these images come from Tea Together. A great classic set and it's going away the tea time dies are actually discount I'm just getting my image on here straight on my block they're discounted I think they were like eight dollars and forty cents for the whole pack of dies which is a crazy good price and I'm stamping my sentiment on petal pink cardstock in soft suede ink okay now we need to do some die cutting. So I need to clear my space and I'm going to pull in my trusty cuddle bug machine. Now, I am not allowed to show pictures, but I can tell you that Stampin' Up! is coming out with two die cutting and embossing machines that in the new catalog. They will not be available until later on in the catalog period but they'll be in the catalog and one's going to be a mini and the other one is going to be a regular sized one. So the mini one will be very portable for travel. So if you like to craft on the go, that would be the right size to get. And then the regular size one can accommodate any of our dies and embossing folders. So everybody's really excited about it because we've been waiting a while since 
the Big Shot was discontinued in our catalog. So now Stampin' Up! came And they made it in a neutral color so that if you like to decorate a certain way, you know, your craft room, your craft area, it will um, it'll match it. So but the demonstrators have seen it, but we're just not allowed to show it yet. So there's the teapot. And next up, we are going to die cut that big flower or the rose that I heat embossed. And yes, there is a die for that too. There's even a die for that little teeny tiny rose I stamped above and below the sentiment inside the, um, the fun fold. But I'm not going to die cut that one out. I don't have the most nimble fingers. I feel like I'm always dropping stuff when it comes to my projects. So... I don't know. That one's really tiny for me. Okay, and now to die cut the Happy Mother's Day sentiment, I'm actually going to use a die from the Ornate Frames dies. Do you guys remember way back in the holiday catalog, we had these frames, the Ornate Frames dies, and they were featured as part of a Halloween um the Halloween suite, Monster Bash, I think it was called. But they kept the frames because they're so pretty. They're fancy. They've got all kinds of little details and filigrees on them and cutouts. And they go with so many of our sentiments. So I'm really glad Stampin' Up! kept them. Okay, that is all for the die cutting. That. Do you, have you guys been able to do a lot of crafting while you've been at home here sheltering in place is the nice way of saying it I know I've made a whole stack of cards and I've mailed out a, a ton of cards too so I've invested a lot in stamps I mean posted stamps <laughs> and stamping stamps too of course so now we have our pieces we have our teapot we have our colored rose which I absolutely love and the Happy Mother's Day sentiment. Oh, and I need to sponge that too. I can't forget this little piece. There we go. Okay, we're going to glue those pieces on before they disappear into the black hole that is my craft desk. And I'm going to use liquid glue. Nothing's getting put on with dimensionals because this card's going to be lumpy enough with the flap in the ribbon. Now when you glue this teapot, you want to make sure you just put glue in the center because you'll notice the handle and the spout hang off the side. And you do not want to glue that to your card front, otherwise you won't be able to open the fun fold you just made. So there's the teapot. Oh my gosh, I just, I love this set so much. So much. I still need that. Okay, and this rose. I feel like making more cards with this set when I'm done here. I remember one Christmas I made my grandmother a stack of birthday cards and thank you cards using this set because I knew she would like them. And then I sent another pack off to a teacher at my daughter's school. And yeah, they really liked them. Okay, now I used both this petal pink metallic edged ribbon. It's edged with champagne foil. And I forgot to point out, too, that this is also champagne foil, these words on here. So they go together nicely, and this is part of Parisian Blossoms. And then I'm also going to use some very vanilla scalloped lace trim. This is in our annual catalog. And I'm going to tie them together. So first I'm going to tie a bow with the petal pink ribbon. See what I mean about having fumble fingers? Sometimes they just get in the way. Thank you, Kathy. Or Cindy, I'm sorry, I'm reading wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. I have my laptop set kind of far away from me. So we have that, and then I will trim it. Grab my ribbon scissors here. Have you ever used up an entire spool of thread? I mean, I know how much ribbon we all like to buy. So, has anybody ever used up an entire spool of thread before? I mean, ribbon before. It's oddly satisfying when you do. Now, I'm going to take this trim, and I'm actually going to tie it around this petal pink bow. 
And so first I'm going to make sure that I've got enough length here that I can work with. And I'm going to tie this into a knot so that it holds still while I work with it. And I'm tying it right in the middle of that petal pink bow. Just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie it, the lace itself, into a bow. And that's how I'm going to get a double bow without tying both ribbons together at the same time. Okay, and then I'm going to trim that. Just like this. Okay, now I find the best way to adhere ribbon, lace, twine, whatever to my card front is to use a roll of mini glue dots. And you just peel back the wax paper take your ribbon and stick it right on the glue dot on the sheet and when you lift it up the glue dot sticks to the back of it and I'm going to put it just above not on the opening because again it's going to stick to your card base and you won't be able to open this but either just above it or just below it so that's the front but I had to make the inside look pretty too so I'm going to open this up and pull out my petal pink ink pad and I'm going to take that rose that I heat embossed with gold powder on the front of my card only this time I'm going to stamp it in petal pink in each of the four corners of the inside of my card so whatever message I choose to write on the inside here will be framed beautifully there we go okay so that is the fun fold that was inspired by a card sent to me by my friend Marilyn. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you know what? I forgot the little pearls. I forgot the little pearls. That is the finishing touch. So I'm going to take my paper piercer, which it's now called the Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to use that to add some tiny, whoop, some tiny pearls to the front of this card, if I can get them. My goodness. They don't want to stick. Okay, let's get another one here. There we go. I think I had a little bit of glue on my finger. So they were coming back off. Okay. There we go. Perfect finishing touch. I love it. I love what pearls add to a card stuff aside. Okay, I hope you guys like that card number one. So that's the Mother's Day card. And now I'm going to show you how to make a Father's Day card using a fun fold. Because I think, guys, dads like special cards too. I mean, of course we don't frill them all up, you know, for them, but I think um, they still appreciate it. And I know People always like what you write on the insides of cards. They like those messages. I'm going to clean up my space here for a little bit so that I have some room to do the next one. I used a lot of stamps for that one. Here's another tip for you too. Sometimes I stamp images and I just sit there and color them while I'm watching TV and then I keep them in a little plastic bag that Stampin' Up! uses to package their products in. And I just keep it with the stamp case. So if I have to make a card in a hurry, I have it there. And I can just pull it out and use those elements to make a quick card. Okay. Get my pieces put aside. All right. And we're going to move on to this card right here. And this one is going to use the High Tide stamp set, which is sticking around. And the fancy fold with this one is this is a belly band that slides off and it's a gate fold it opens up. So it's still your standard size A2 card. It's just folded in a slightly different way. And then the belly band can slide right back onto the card. Let me line that up. There we go. Just like that. And I like how this uses a long strip of designer series paper too. I think we're always looking for ways to use up our designer series paper. It's 
scoreboard. We need the scoreboard to make some scores in our Whisper White cardstock. So we're gonna start with a thick Whisper White cardstock base. And this is simply eight and a half by five and a half inches. Now you'll notice normally you would score down the middle at four and a quarter, but we're not going to with this card. Instead, we are gonna score at, let me get my notes out here to make sure I don't do this wrong. Okay, we're gonna score it at two and an eighth. So yes, you have to use eighth of an inch. And then you're gonna score at six and three eighths of an inch. Now, my scoreboard has eighth of an inch marks, as does Stampin' Up's Simply Scored tool. So it's not hard to do that at all. And then we're gonna fold them on those two score lines into the center. Now can you see why it's called a gatefold card? Because it opens and closes like a gate. Okay, and we're gonna pull out some Knight of Navy ink and a sponge. And I'm gonna sponge the edges of this Whisper White cardstock base. Now we, Stampin' Up! has thick Whisper White cardstock and then they also have the regular Whisper White cardstock. The difference, I get asked a lot what the difference is between the two. Thick Whisper White is heavier, which makes it perfect for you for using as a card base. It is heavy enough that it can um, support the layers of paper that you may add to your card. And then regular Whisper White is a little bit thinner and that's perfect for stamping and using as a layer that you're adding onto your card. So that's the difference. I really only use Thick Whisper White when I use it as a card base. That's it. Okay, now this is Country Club Designer Series paper. It's in the mini catalog and I'll, I'll be honest, this is not a paper I've actually used very much and I haven't really seen it being used very much, but I thought for a Father's Day card, I liked it. So I cut two pieces, five and three eighths of an inch by two inches. And you're gonna cut two of those and those are gonna get glued to the right panel and the left panel of your gatefold with multi-purpose liquid glue. Just center it on there. And then we're gonna do some layering on the inside of this card also. And I'm using Knight of Navy and Garden Green and Smoky Slate. And I used, I stamped the inside of my card with, there's nothing little about the light you shine. Because I think, well, that's how I feel about my dad. And I'm gonna stamp that in basic gray. And these are all standard sized layers, so they drop down a quarter inch from each other. Just like that. And here's something I did to go along with that sentiment. So in the High Tide stamp set, there is this ray of light right here, which is meant to come out of the lighthouse. But I thought it went really well with this sentiment. So I'm actually going to stamp it in smoky slate ink, which or yeah, smoky slate, which is a lighter gray. I'm gonna stamp it around this sentiment here. Just for a fun effect. I'm inking this up once in my ink pad, and then I'm going to stamp off onto my scratch paper, and I'm gonna start putting those beacons of light all around it. Now this is called, I don't know, generation stamping, one-off stamping, but the principle is you ink it up in your ink pad and then stamp it on scratch paper to remove some of that ink and then stamp it, and I forgot to do that, look at that, and you remove some of the ink so that you get a lighter shade on your project there. And you can see, I forgot. <laughs> to do that. But you know what? This card's going to my dad. I think he'll be okay with it. I'm his favorite daughter. I'm his only daughter. I have to be his favorite, right? Okay, so we've got that and we're going to glue all those layers together and put them on the inside of our card. 
at first it felt a little heavy to me gluing three layers together and putting on the inside of the card, especially when I've got so much going on on the outside. But I'm going to hand deliver this anyways. So it's all okay. So the next layer is garden green. And it would help if I got that on a little straighter. There we go. And then we're going to add the smoky slate one. Okay, there's the inside. Okay, now we have to work on the outside. So what I did is I took smoky slate cardstock and stitch nested labels dies and I cut two labels from those. And those are going to go on our belly band. And also in the stitch nested labels uh, die set, there's this piece, I don't know if you can see it, but it has, it embosses a line of stitching, the same stitching that's on these labels. It's just a flat piece. And so for an accent piece, I just went ahead and did that on a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. And now what I'm going to do is stamp the lighthouse onto a piece of Whisper White cardstock. There is no die for the lighthouse. So I am going to have to fussy cut that one out. And I need to find a block for this. Here we go. Now this is a two-step stamp. So there's the solid image and then there's the one that has the more detail. I prefer to start with the detailed stamp first. I find it easier to line them up that way. So I'm going to ink up with Knight of Navy and stamp that on my Whisper White cardstock. I told you I like to use my scraps. Okay. And then I'm going to take the solid stamp and I'm going to ink that up also with Knight of Navy. Only this time I'm going to stamp off once onto my scrap paper before I line it up and over stamp the details. Like that, so that I get a little bit more contrast between the two layers. And then I'll take my paper snips and I'm going to fussy cut that out. I know people have a love-hate relationship with fussy cutting. Some people are really strongly for using dies. If the stamp set has a, a set of dies with it, they get it. And then there are others that find fussy cutting really relaxing. I've seen people do amazing fussy cutting with an X-Acto knife. Like crazy good. So intricate. They must have the steadiest hand. Because it's just gorgeous what they do with it. I'm in the camp of enjoying fussy cutting. Okay, so there we have those images. And now I'm using Itty Bitty Greetings to stamp World's Best Father right there. And yes, this stamp set, it comes in two, I think it still comes in two cases. I'm not sure because they don't sell it in wood mount anymore. I bought this before they discontinued wood mount stamp sets. And I'm going to use Basic Gray to stamp World's Best Father on the smaller stitched label there. And yes, this might come out a little crooked because I can't see very well. But that's okay. If I tried, if I sent out only the perfect cards I made, I wouldn't send any cards out. It is the truth. I just wouldn't send them out. So now I have everything. Let's glue those two together. The smaller label is going to go on top of the larger label. Off to the right, though. I'm not centering this because I want to leave room for my lighthouse on the left-hand side. And now I have my little embossed piece. You can use fine tip glue also to glue this little piece down if you find you have better control that way. And the reason I used this skinny little piece is just so that it would highlight that world's best father sentiment. Otherwise, I felt like it got a little bit lost in the card. Now, originally, I cut this. This is the belly band. Originally, I cut the Country Club Designer Series paper 2 inches by 12 inches. The 12 inches actually turned out to be too long. So I thought 9 and 3 quarters is a much better um, length. And I that's the length that I actually have on 
my project sheet with the measurements. But what I'm going to do is I don't, I'm not scoring this. When I make belly bands, I don't score them. I find it easier to wrap them around my project and pinch where they naturally would crease. So I'm taking one end of this and slightly overlapping it where the gatefold opens and closes. And I'm going to wrap this around pinching as it goes around the sides of my card. And you can see the 12 inch piece, it is too long. So I'm trimming it down. Like I said, nine and three quarters of an inch would be the perfect length. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of glue to adhere those ends together. Now you wanna make sure you don't glue your belly band too tight. If you make it too tight, you will not be able to slide it on and off of your card. And we want them to be able to get to the inside of that card. Okay, so we have that. And where this seam is, this label is going to actually um, cover it, so it'll be fine. It will be fine. And if you don't like where it's at, you can always adjust it too, or you can make the seam go in the back. It's whatever you choose. Entirely up to you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some liquid glue to the back of that, and I'm going to press and hold that down just to give it some time to adhere. And this is retiring too, and I'm so sad. It's Night of Navy and Sahara Sand Baker's Twine. And you can see you get a nice big spool of it. And I'm going to wrap this three times around my card base. And here's the nice thing about making guy cards, is you can just tie stuff in a knot. You don't have to fuss with a bow. So, I'm gonna make a knot here with the twine. And I'm going to trim it. And then what I'm going to do is take the tails and I'm gonna tie those in a knot too. Like that. Just for something fun. And now I'm gonna attach my lighthouse with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And see, I even use the edges of my Stampin' Dimensionals. The borders, you can snip them down to size and use those pieces too. Don't waste any of them. Peel off the liner on the back of them, and then I'm going to put my lighthouse. Let's see, I don't wanna cover that knot, so let me adjust my twine there, okay. And the other thing too you wanna be careful of is where you put your dimensionals, because again, you don't want your lighthouse to stick to your card base. You want them to be able to remove the belly band, so make sure your dimensionals are only sticking to the belly band. So I have a little bit of overhang there, I can tell. So I'm actually, I think, just gonna move this down a little bit, or I'll cut off the excess like that. Okay, and that works. So there you go. There's your Father's Day cards with the gatefold style with the belly band to hold it together. And then we have the Mother's Day cards with this flap here, just like that. Aren't they pretty? I like them. And here's another idea for the Tea Together set. I made this card too a couple weeks ago. This was celebration paper, but in this case, I watercolored this. I stamped it in, I can't remember the color, but I stamped it in a colored ink and then I took an aqua painter that was wet and added water to it and it smeared and blurred that ink. So it made it look watercolored. And of course some more pearls up there and more mint macaron. So I just love that set so, 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 so much. So um, yeah, so if you're interested in making these cards, I will have the project sheet up with all the measurements in the description to this video on my blog and also in the YouTube description when I upload this. If you need any of the supplies to make these cards, go ahead to my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net and you can find everything there. And some of it's even at a discount because it is retiring soon. So um, if you like this video, please feel free to share it. I thank you for doing that. And thank you for joining me today, guys. And I will see you next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. All right. Bye.